Another important idea in production is to not only minimize total cost, but to minimize average cost. And a typical cost function has a couple different properties. Now, notice that here, when I substitute zero for the cost, we get 6912. So this 6912 in this case has a special name. It is the fixed cost, which is, means the cost before you actually start doing anything like hourly labor or whatever else. So that's what kind of makes cost a particular item of interest when we're doing some analysis. So our goal in this problem is to minimize average cost. Now remember that average cost, which I'm gonna call AC, is equal to the total cost divided by the number of units. But in this case, X is the number of units. So we're gonna say 0.002 X to the third plus 9X plus 6912 all over X. And again, that is what I'm calling AC or AC of X, you could call it. Some other places call it C bar of X. I'm just trying to keep the notation light here. Now, since minimizing requires us to use derivatives, I'm gonna actually go ahead and make one more step here. I'm going to rewrite the over X as X to the negative one, because I wanna be able to take a derivative. Remember that powers are always easier. So to find the minimum, we take the derivative. So let's see what we get here. So bringing the two down, two times 0 0.002 is 0 0.004, and that's x. The derivative of a constant is zero, and the derivative of the third term is negative. So the negative comes down, so that's negative 6912, x to the, and then I take away one from the power, that's negative two. And yes, that is equal to zero because that's where mins and maxes are formed. Well, I'm gonna do one more step here though in order to make this easier to solve algebraically. I'm going to say that this is 6912 over x squared and then that whole thing is zero. Now remember, critical numbers can occur when the derivative is either equal to zero or undefined. And undefined, in our case, translates to the denominator is equal to zero. So you do notice that this denominator here is zero when x is equal to zero. That's not particularly useful to us because if x equals zero, there would be no production or anything. So we just, we just would never have any production. So we're not even going to consider that. So I am gonna look, look at the case where the derivative is equal to zero. Now in order to do that, I'm actually gonna move this term over to the right because now we're in solving for x mode. And then the easiest way to go through this is to multiply both sides by x squared. So now we have 0.004x to the third equals 6912. And now dividing both sides by 0 0.004. I was gonna go over here because I actually have a little bit more room. This would give us, and I urge you to use your calculators as well, this should give us x cubed equals 1,728,000. So to solve for x, remember, we do take the cube root of both sides. So x is equal to the cube root of 17, 28000 and that actually means 120 units so at a production level of 120 units it looks like our average cost is minimized but we do have to verify this remember that setting it equal to zero just means hey there's a horizontal tangent here we have to make sure that it's not a max or what i call a fake out point which is a point where the graph could either increase level out and then increase again or decrease level out and decrease again so we are gonna verify that also. And I'm gonna verify that using the second derivative test. So just to remember what that is. So second derivative test. So remember that C is a critical number, which is what the 120 was there, right? So we know a few things. If the second derivative is positive at C, 
that means we have a relative minimum. And here is the visual for it. So remember that this piece here means it's concave up, but the C means that, or the, the C being a critical number means, hey, there's a horizontal tangent there. The only, two, the only way that those two things can coexist is if you have a relative minimum at C. So if the second derivative at the C is negative, remember that was a relative max. And again, here's the visual that goes along with that. And if the second derivative is equal to zero, remember that meant I don't know. And then we would have to revert back to the first derivative. So the second derivative test is kind of risky in that way where we're not guaranteed an answer all the time. But I'm feeling lucky and we're gonna use the second derivative test for this one. So AC double prime, well, let's just look back at what AC prime was. So I'm gonna write that down first. AC prime was 0.004x minus 6192x to the negative two, if not mistake, oh, 6912, not 6192. Okay, so, if I take my second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative, first term becomes 0 0.004. Now when this negative two comes down, that becomes a plus, and now that is not 6912, gotta multiply that by two, that is 13824, so 13,824, x to the negative third. And if I substitute my 120 in there, and again, remember, with these tests, we're not necessarily concerned about the values, just the result. This has to be a positive quantity. So therefore, we have a minimum AC at a production level of 120. So then one question we could answer is, what is the average cost? You know, we know it's minimized at that production level. What is it? Well, we could just simply substitute 120 in for the average cost function, which remember was 0.002x squared plus 9 plus 6912 over x. And whoops, I missed. That should have been 120 squared. So I'm going to try to squeeze that in here. And I believe if we do that, let me go to my calculator here. Uh, yeah, you see it on the second line. I'll highlight it there. There's that line and there's the average cost, $95.40. So we're gonna spend, we're gonna on average have a cost of $95.40 per item. That's with the fixed cost factored in also. So then one thing you could also ask for is the total cost. And here's the, the funny thing about it. Yes, you have a total cost function you could use, but we don't have to use it if we already know the average cost because the total is the average times the number of units, right? The average tells us how much we're spending per unit. If we multiply that by the number of units, we get the total. And that number you might've noticed was over there too. That was, uh, oh, I'll just multiply that by, whoops, times 120, and it is, whoops, that was already there, 95.40 times 120, calculator problems here, 11,448, and there we have it. So, okay, hopefully that helps you to pull some things together. We got to use the second derivative test. It is somewhat of a useful test even though the first derivative test always gives us the correct information. And like I said, I hope this helped you pull some things together and I thank you for watching.